It has been often said that dog is man's best friend, and obviously that isn't just exclusive to men. Ask any pet owner, whether they own a dog, cat, rabbit, hamster, or soul-sucking interdimensional parasitic monster with too many tentacles, and they'll all tell you the same. Your pet can be your best friend. They can give you the most unconditional, affectionate form of love possible. And as long as you treat your little buddy right, they'll be loyal to you for the rest of your life and theirs. It's not uncommon for a pet to outlive their owner, especially if they belong to someone who's elderly. And that might be a sad thing to think about for some. Although it is important to remember the positives, like how much happiness and companionship that animal would have brought an aging owner in their last years of life. Even someone younger who dies unexpectedly might have had their quality of life infinitely improved by owning a loving pet to make them smile. But on the other hand, there's the negative downside that now some pets have to live on after a tragic death, not fully understanding where their beloved owner went. So often we hear stories of dogs that waited for their master to come home, only for them to never walk through the front door again. And it's equally hard when things pan out the opposite way and an owner loses their pet. The one silver lining is that we as human beings have a far greater understanding of death and the grief it causes. We know that eventually, despite how hard it can be to adjust to that initial heartbreaking loss, it is possible to move on and for things to one day get better. But what happens when someone can't accept the death of their beloved animal companion? When the unconditional love of their pet is suddenly missing from their life, how far will a person go to recapture that feeling? How long does it take for grief born out of love to become an unhealthy fixation? And what is the true price of obsession? Well, the answer involves SCP-589, both what it can give and just as easily take away. For as long as she could remember, and even further back than that, Erin and her dog Poncho had been inseparable. Ever since her mom had first adopted that scrappy little Jack Russell Terrier, Erin had fallen head over heels in love with that little rascal. Loving a pet is different from loving another person, because they just can't help showing how much they love you back. Humans, for all their good qualities, are so nuanced, and not everyone is honest with each other all of the time. But a pet? especially a dog, even though they can't speak. A bark or a whimper or excited wagging of a tail can easily tell you how they're feeling, and Poncho was no exception. Erin and her mom Cleo lived alone. It was just the two of them for quite a long time, and while Cleo had little problem with that, she couldn't help but notice how isolating it was for her daughter. From a young age, Erin had always been quiet, kept to herself at school, her mom kept expecting her to make some friends, asked to invite them over or vice versa, but it didn't seem to be happening. It didn't seem to be bothering her daughter, but Cleo was worried that it was giving her the wrong idea, that being on her own was somehow better. So in an effort to give Aaron at least one source of companionship, Poncho joined the family. Brown patches dotted over his white fur. He was the perfect pet an excitable and loving little puppy that Aaron was immediately smitten with. When Cleo told her he was hers to keep, being only seven years old, Aaron broke down crying with tears of joy. Her mom had let her pick out a name for him, and she'd quickly settled on Poncho. At first, Aaron had meant to say it differently, in order to name the pup after a friendly character from her favorite animated movie, but had mispronounced it in her excitement at meeting the energetic dog for the first time. The name quickly stuck though, and as the years went on and Poncho got bigger, Aaron bought her four-legged best friend a little poncho of his own to wear when it started raining. Over the following years, Poncho became Aaron's most constant and loving companion. Even as she grew up, moving through her childhood, and found making friends a little easier with every passing year, there never came a time when she didn't need her best friend. When Aaron had her first breakup in high school and came home with floods of tears in her eyes, Poncho could sense she was upset and came wandering up to her, sitting in her lap to make her feel just a little bit better. Then a few years later, when her mom got sick, Aaron had to take care of her, a task that would have been much harder without Poncho there to alleviate that stress and lift her and Cleo's spirits. And when Cleo eventually passed, the little white and brown dog sat quietly with his owner as she said goodbye to her mom. 
Now that it was just the two of them, Aaron and Poncho were living in a tiny apartment. It was cramped for one person and a dog, but Aaron was just grateful to have a place to live in the company of her favorite pup. Besides, Poncho wasn't a puppy anymore. In fact, he hadn't raced around the park or chased a ball for quite a long time. With the numerous stresses of her everyday life, least of all holding down two jobs and her desperate attempts to make enough money to pay rent, Aaron had hardly noticed the signs. Poncho was showing his age. It had been happening gradually in the background over the years. He wouldn't chase the ball or really move around much, and when he did, it was little more than a lethargic plod around the apartment. Perhaps it was because of such a measured, slower-paced change that Aaron was unable to acknowledge it. She could see her old friend was getting more tired, sleeping longer, his tail rarely wagging as much as it used to, but by now that felt like Poncho's normal behavior. Then again, given how important her dog was to her, it's just as likely she didn't want to accept the truth that unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. He was almost 15 in human years, which by all accounts is an impressive age for a dog, especially one of Poncho's size and breed. It was on a day that Aaron was out working her morning job when it happened. The faithful, adoring Jack Russell Terrier, who had spent his years being nothing but loved and giving back only more love in return, curled up on Aaron's bed. The apartment was still, silent, not a sound to be heard, save for those last, tired few breaths. Laying there, maybe the dog wondered if he'd ever get to see his friend again, if she would make it back from work in time. He closed his little brown eyes and peacefully drifted off for one last sleep. During the break between her shifts, after the end of the one at her first job and before starting her second, Erin had just enough time to get home. Usually, she had just had enough time to eat and get herself ready for the changeover, then quickly check on Poncho before having to dash back out. Poking her head into the bedroom, she saw her dog laying right there on her bed. There was a stillness to him that instantly made her stomach drop. His ears didn't move when she called his name. He didn't react when she stroked his fur. He was gone. And the moment she realized it, Aaron felt like her whole world had come crashing down. The loss of her oldest and closest friend hurt almost as much as losing her mom. Aaron always felt that the problem with funerals wasn't just how sad they were, or how it always seemed to rain when she went to one. Instead, it was more that they could never properly sum up just how much someone truly meant. Nobody could ever condense the years worth of love and memories into a burial, and it was worse when losing a pet. There was no procession, no wake, nobody else there, just her and Poncho, saying goodbye a final time. Eventually things got to be too much. The heartbreak of Poncho's death was another struggle in a lifetime of lows that had all left their lasting wounds on Aaron. That coupled with the stress of trying to carry on with a busy life, barely able to keep herself afloat in either of her jobs, had pushed her to the edge of a breakdown. Maybe that's what summoned it. Perhaps something had sensed all of Aaron's mental anguish and had come to seek her out. It might have been that her wishes for something, some little alleviation to all the pain and stress were finally being granted. Or maybe it was just a gift left by her neighbor. The sun had long since set when Aaron arrived back at her apartment, stepping over the envelopes that littered her doormat, a few with words like overdue and urgent notice printed on them in red ink. Passing through the hallway, Aaron paused as she always did, hoping to hear the gentle pattering of paws against the floor. Her therapist had dissuaded her from doing that, saying it would only make moving on from losing Poncho worse. She didn't care. She wanted her dog back. And opening the door to her bedroom, it seemed like someone had been listening. Sat on her bed was a stuffed animal right in the spot where she'd found her little friend on that horrible day. It had been made to look like a dog, specifically resembling a Jack Russell Terrier with brown patches over its white fur. The plushie was even wearing a little rain poncho. The sight of it was enough to cause Aaron to break down in tears, weeping in heavy sobs as she dashed across the bedroom to hold it in her arms. Hugging it tightly, her tears seeped into the soft fur as she felt it against her face. She didn't even think to question where it had even come from. All she wanted to do in that moment was hold the stuffed animal close. For the first time in what felt like years, a feeling of relief washed over Aaron. It was as if everything was melting away. The stress of work and the toll of her tiring shifts gone. 
All the pain from losing Cleo and Poncho dissipated too. In fact, it felt like she now had her beloved dog back. No, it was better than that. It was almost as though everything about Poncho, his energy, his spirit, the way he made her feel so calm and loved was all distilled into this stuffed animal. And now, it would never grow old, never age and die, causing her more pain. Erin gripped the soft toy tightly. The longer she held the hug for, the more her stress and sadness faded. Her face was still wet with tears. Although her sobbing had gradually become low, gentle chuckles soon giving way to a peal of uncontrollable laughter rising in volume. It was as though she had taken something, and the very chemistry of her brain was being altered. But after so much hardship, it felt good, to the point where she was almost lightheaded, laying down on the floor of her bedroom, arms locked around the plushie that reminded her so much of Poncho. Erin continued softly giggling to herself. Her entire body relaxed, so much so that every part of her felt like warm butter, as if she was about to start melting through the floorboards. Although she didn't know it, or probably wouldn't have even cared, her dopamine levels were spiking, flooding her with the bodily hormone that relieves stress and makes a person feel good. In fact, right now, she was feeling better than she ever had. Every day that followed, Erin would come home to her stuffed animal, her poncho too, as she liked to think of it. It didn't bother her how childlike anyone else might find it for a grown woman to rely so heavily on a plushie for comfort. At any rate, it wasn't something she was advertising to anyone else. After every shift at both of her jobs, she'd race back to her apartment, right to Poncho 2, and just sit there, just basking in the way it made her feel. It was the most all-encompassing sense of euphoria and relief, reducing her stress so much that she felt like she was floating, her body lighter than air. That feeling was all that mattered to her. Some days she wouldn't even eat. Poncho 2 was more important to her than food. Gradually, she started to become addicted to that feeling. Having to wait until the end of her work shifts to feel that rush of happy chemicals flood her brain was too long of a delay. She started to crave it while working, unable to focus, feeling erratic and restless without Poncho too. Of course, she couldn't risk bringing it to work with her. What if someone took it, or she dropped it? Her boss might see her with a stuffed animal at her desk and fire her on the spot, or think that she was absolutely crazy. The only safe place for her source of relief was at home, but Erin knew she needed something to bridge the gap while she was working. The only substitute that worked was taking a photo of Poncho 2 on her phone, then blowing it up and printing off a copy. Erin could carry it around portably, keeping it in her pocket and taking it out to look at it every few minutes while she worked. The hit of positive chemicals it gave her wasn't quite as strong as getting to hold her stuffed animal. After all, it was just a grainy photo from her phone, essentially acting like a patch to tide her over until she could get back home to the real thing. However, it didn't take long for Erin to start taking Poncho with her anywhere that wasn't work, to the grocery store, to visit her mom and her dog, and, of course, to therapy. I'm rather concerned about this pattern of behavior, Erin's psychotherapist Dr. Lee stated when her patient explained what had been happening. Sitting across on the opposite side of her office on a leather couch, Erin had Poncho 2 pressed tightly against her. I don't care, she sighed, her brain already awash with hormones that kept her calm. I like how it makes me feel, so I don't care. Erin, look at yourself, Dr. Lee urged. You aren't properly dealing with your grief. It seems to me you're channeling all your desire for positive emotion into this stuffed animal. Poncho 2. Erin corrected her without taking her eyes off the soft brown and white dog in its little cloak. Listen to me, the therapist insisted, trying desperately to get through to her. Poncho, your dog, your real dog, is gone. You lost him six months ago. And your mom, Cleo, she passed away too. You have to process and come to terms with those things, as sad as they might make you feel. That's how we move on. But what you're doing right now isn't healthy, Erin. It's becoming an obsession. Turning away, Erin pressed Poncho 2 up against her face. I don't care, she repeated. By now, Erin had become fully dependent on Poncho 2, showing up late for both jobs just so she could spend longer feeling those endorphins and hormones that hugging the stuffed animal seemed to bring. It didn't take long for her to start skipping entire shifts for days at a time and canceling any and all other plans just to sit at home basking in the relief brought on by her apparent obsession. Her apartment became a mess, untidy piles of mail by the front door, 
the walls plastered with hundreds of photos of her stuffed animal, fueling her obsession. Her evening job was the first to fire Aaron, citing her recent absences as the grounds for her dismissal. Even then, she still didn't seem to care. The fact she might not be able to make rent barely registered. Returning home after her other job called her in to tell Aaron she would no longer be working there either, she instantly looked around for Poncho too, but it was nowhere to be found. All the photos on the walls having faded, Aaron checked her phone. All the original copies of the pictures were gone too. Instantly racked with fear, so addicted to the plushie that she could barely function without it, she began tearing her apartment to shreds looking for it. She wrenched cupboards off their hinges and tipped over her refrigerator. Flipping her mattress, Aaron sliced the fabric open with a kitchen knife, searching high and low for Poncho too, but unable to find it anywhere. She became frantic, erratic, pulling her hair out in a fit of uncontrollable despair. Where had it gone? Had someone stolen it? Dr. Lee. The paranoia had already set in, convincing Aaron that her therapist must have taken Poncho too. She was the only other person who knew about it, and had been so critical of her using it to make herself feel better. Marching into Dr. Lee's office utterly enraged beyond reason, all Aaron could think about was getting her stuffed animal back, no matter what she had to do. The effect it had on her was so powerful, so potent, and addictive, that living without it was worth anything, even another person's life. Little did Aaron realize, as her hands grew wetter, coated with more of Dr. Lee's blood after every bludgeoning strike, her therapist had no idea where Poncho too was. In fact, she had nothing to do with it vanishing in the first place. It had disappeared all on its own, along with all the photograph copies Aaron had printed. Arriving somewhere miles away, SCP-589 was ready to begin the whole cycle again on its next victim. It would take on whatever shape it needed to appease the desires of the very next person to find it, preying on their vulnerability and making them totally dependent on it. That was what it did. Everywhere it went, leeching off people that it could easily manipulate. Its presence and interaction would calm SCP-589's victims, helping to alleviate their stress or make them feel better about their deepest insecurities. Before long, these helpless victims would be able to think of nothing else, feeling as if they were unable to live without their obsession doll. And every time, that was when SCP-589 would make its cruelest move. It would vanish, leaving its prey in a state of intense withdrawal. With the calming influence of SCP-589 absent from their lives all of a sudden, the infected people would suffer from a variety of potential psychological symptoms, manic depression, psychosis, uncontrollable despair, dementia, or in Aaron's case, paranoia, and a heightened sense of aggression that caused her to murder Dr. Lee. That was one of the earliest in a spate of similar incidents that had been reported. As SCP-589 traveled from town to town, its influence spread, leaving entire populations dead in its wake. All the while, the stuffed animal fed on the mental anguish that it caused its victims, making them pay the ultimate price for their obsession. Now go and check out SCP-2295 The Bear with a Heart of Patchwork and SCP-6330 Guardians of the Innocent for more stuffed animal-related anomalies contained by the SCP Foundation.